Hello everyone, welcome back to Potty Plan Entertainment. My name is Chris and in case you don't know, I review movies and I rank them on a scale of 0 to 100 in increments of 5. Today, we are going to be talking about Batman Begins. Batman Begins was released in 2005 and it stars Christian Bale, Michael Caine, uh, Ken Watanabe, Liam Neeson, Katie Holmes, Gary Oldman, Cillian Murphy, and Tom Wilkinson. It was directed by Christopher Nolan and is produced by Benjamin Melnicker and Michael Uslan. And this movie shows us the beginning of Batman, as the name Batman begins. This gives us his origin story, how he became, how Bruce Wayne became Batman, what uh, what happened to his parents, where his fear of bats came from. It gives us uh, the backstory of the relationship between him and Rachel. Uh, Rachel! And, uh, um... This movie features uh, the villain, the Scarecrow. Classic Batman villain, the Scarecrow is in this movie. Um, and he wants to... He So essentially, him and some other guys who I won't spoil for you, because it is kind of a spoil, so I'm not, I'm not going to tell you who the, other, who the other guys are, but these other guys, uh, what they want to do is they want to poison the people of Gotham. Because they believe that the city has become so crime-ridden, which it has that it just needs a reset and bruce wayne believes that the city can be saved that there's no need for that that it, it can come back from it from the massive massive crime wave that they're having and so they're gonna butt heads over that really 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 great movie the, the thing about christopher nolan he's never made a bad movie before or at least not to my knowledge um, I don't believe he's ever made a bad movie before. Um, and this is no exception to that. Uh, this is a fantastic movie. Um, the story is so great. And it's so smart. It's so, it's so well thought out. The villains are, are really good too. Now, the, the Scarecrow is a little bit disappointing. It, it would have been nice if he wasn't just a dude in a suit wearing, the, wearing that mask. Um, it would have been nice if they had done a little bit more with him, um, and utilized him better into the story, which is actually one of my cons with that. I wish the Scarecrow had been utilized better in the story, in the movie, but, uh, he's still pretty cool. Um, it, one of the things I like about this movie, and it's one of the things that Marvel has always done so well, it makes Batman believable. And I'll give you an example, Ant-Man. Marvel found a way to make Ant-Man plausible. Even though that's like the weirdest superhero. They managed to make him believable. They managed to make Ant-Man believable. They took each superhero and they made them plausible. Even though you know it's all fiction and stuff. It just like It's just like Jurassic Park. How you know that it's all fiction. How they made the dinosaurs. They give you a tangible way for the dinosaurs to be there. And Marvel does that same thing with the superheroes. Even though you know it's kind of outlandish. And a lot of it's fictional. It gives you a tangible way for the superheroes to exist. They're not just like cartoony. Like they seem real. And that's what this movie does so well with Batman. It makes Batman very real. It makes how he becomes Batman very believable very real it's really well thought out morgan freeman and michael kane are fantastic in this movie like they always are two of the greatest actors who ever walked the planet uh undisputable they are um this is also the first great batman movie i mean like the old ones with uh like michael keen those are enjoyable to watch but this is like the first great batman movie actually no batman and robin is the first great batman movie so this is the second great batman Batman movie. Second great Batman movie. Yeah. Uh, the costume is also really good too. I love um, uh, I love Batman's costume. Really, really cool, cool costume. Actually, I know that this is an unpopular opinion, but I actually like his costume better than uh, Ben Affleck's Batman costume. That's just my opinion though. Um, I also loved uh, Bruce Wayne in this. He was really well fleshed out and one of the things uh, that this movie does so great is that you care about the man behind the mask. That's what the uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies did really well, is you really care 
about the it's not just all about the cool fight scenes and that superhero but you also really care about the man behind the mask this does that really well too uh the cinematography is really cool too um and i love the sword fight between raz al ghul and bruce wayne it's a uh, probably in my opinion it's the best action series in this film and it's got some great one-liners swear to me knight's coat <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's perfect, though. A lot of people do think it's perfect. Uh, I got a few cons with it. Uh, so it's got a couple of plot holes in it. Like, for one thing, so Morgan Freeman's character develops, like, the antidote for this, uh, for this thing that the villains are trying to release it to the public. But in, part of the, the uh, delay is that they have to make more of this and get this out to the public. And I'm always confused, how, first of all, how he developed it. He's a weapons expert. And second of all, how he made it so fast. And maybe something went over my head, but that seems like a plot hole to me. And it also seems like that Batman um, and Rachel later on in the movie are somehow immune to it. Again, maybe something just went right over my head, but for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to affect them. It does at first, but it doesn't later. I, I don't know if the antidote makes it so that they're permanently immune to it or if I don't I don't know and also um people might give me crap for this but I don't really like the action in this movie all it is is a bunch of quick cuts it's filmed at wide angles so you can see it really well it's not up close you know so I'll give them that but there it cuts way too much like I, I really don't like the fight scene um between uh batman and liam neeson in this movie it's really hard to see what's going on it's just cut 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 from all these different angles constantly and that's what it does in like every fight scene except for that fight scene between raz al ghul and bruce wayne that i really like every fight scene every action scene was just cut 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 constantly and it's really hard to tell what's going on um that's definitely my biggest flaw with this um but I do really like this movie. I really like this movie. Uh, I forgot to write my rating again. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and write it now. Um, but this is definitely one of the best Batman movies out there. For sure. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend it. Especially this whole Dark Knight trilogy. is just amazing. And this is actually the worst of the three. But this is a really good movie. All three of them are just fantastic. But this is actually the worst of the three. The sequels of this are even better. So with all that being said, I am going to give Batman Begins a 90. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Pi Planet Entertainment for more. Hit the like button. Leave movie suggestions down in the comments down below. Follow me on Instagram at Planet Entertainment for channel updates. Stupid bug. And uh, much love.